Frank, terrific night at York Hall tonight. Dennis McCann not getting the win, a majority draw against Yonet Bluter. Uh, your thoughts on the fight and do we think there'll be a rematch? Um, what are my thoughts? I thought he was just in front. I'm not going to complain because, uh, you know, under the circumstances, um, you know, both boys put in a tremendous, tremendous performances. It was a, a classic fight going backwards and forwards. The ironic thing is, and he struggled in that round, he, you know, his vision was impaired with the blood and so forth. Had the fight been stopped the round before, he would have won it because he lost that last round and on the judges' scorecards, that would have made him a winner. But you know what? There's a possibility we can do a rematch. And we'll see. I'm certain the fans would like to see it again. First outing from Nathaniel Collins as well in spectacular fashion getting the knockout. It's got to be one of the knockouts of the year, hasn't it? I mean, the, that punch hardly travelled. I mean, he did that in style. In the blue corner instead of the red corner and done the business. Just a word on Raven Chapman with her performance. I thought she'd done brilliantly. I thought she boxed extremely well. And I was a big doubter of women's boxing, and I hold my hands up to that. She's, she's, she's just been a joy for us. And uh, it was a keen, keenly, keenly fought contest. And uh, you know, I think, as I say, she's thoroughly deserved to win, and she, it'll be onwards and upwards for her. Wayne Garner, electric performance. What are your thoughts on his performance tonight? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Wayne Garner, put an electric performance tonight. What are your thoughts on that? He's come of age tonight. I think both were the young fighters. I think... I think Dennis came of age, fighting an older guy, an experienced guy, and I thought Ryan, who I've been a big believer in from day one, who's had his ups and downs, some self-inflicted, tonight he showed what he's all about. And all that can happen with him now, he goes from strength to strength. As long as he behaves himself, he can go on to do some really great things in boxing. He's a quality fighter, and that was an excellent performance against a really decent opponent for him. Frank, uh, what's the plan now? Obviously, Liam Davis was sat here uh, ringside. I'm sure he was. I just spoke to him and said, "Listen, they're going to have to, they're going to have to fight again. I'm going to do my own thing for now, and then let's see what happens." But is that the plan? Let these two fight again, get Liam out maybe at the end of the year, and then see what happens in 2024. He'll be out by the end of the year. Don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about him. Yeah, and 2024 should be a big year for him. Frank, uh, just moving away from the show, it's a, it's a big one for you next week. Um, Talk to me. Nervous? Uh, are you looking forward to it? It's a, it's a big opportunity for Daniel. I'm not nervous because I'm not fighting, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, I spoke with Daniel this evening, and I also uh, I'm, I'm see him in the week. He's got he's in a real good place at the moment, both physically and mentally. And for me, I think he has the tools to win this fight against an exceptional fighter. He's young enough. It's going to be similar, I think, in some ways to how this fight panned out tonight with um, with. Um, Dennis, in as much that it's a very experienced guy against a younger fighter, and he's obviously going to try and old man him. But I think that he's got hand speed, he's got power in both hands, he's got good footwork, and I genuinely think that he can pull it off. It's all going to be down to his temperament, and at the moment he's in a brilliant place. Frank, I know you're sick to death of talking about the whole corner van. We saw Dylan Way, and, and this week we saw Lisa Bongana also fail or have an adverse finding uh, in her sample. Is it more concerning that? But for us people outside looking in, there's no clear process on, on how these things are rectified. And it's disgraceful for people outside and inside. And we're not. And, and, and what I'm getting sick of is all the nonsense that's being spouted out about who's doing what. That te that drugs free drugs free sport, which tests, as we know in America, tests uh, various other athletes in different sports, which is not a dangerous sport such as boxing. And their lab reports go back to the organisations. The lab reports that for her, for her went back to Matram. And Matram obviously disclosed it eventually, well, disclosed it. Um, she's obviously had quite a few tests <laughs> under that regime. Um, what concerns me about it is, first of all, is that Drug Street Sport do not have the same standard and do not test for substances that VAR the test for and UCAD test for, like uh, EPO, they don't test for U uh, human growth hormone, um, which is not acceptable. Um, it's no good that somebody takes a test, takes a sample and puts it on a shelf for nine days before submitting it to a laboratory, because all you're doing there is giving a lawyer an opportunity to take that whole process apart. Um, if she was to have a hearing, and I'm sure that something's going to be worked out. At that hearing, 
if she's found to be that she did do something, she should be banned. But they've left a lot of loopholes for her, for her to get out. What I found concerning was apparently she allegedly was going to leave Matram and go and sign with Jake Paul. Um, so you look into that which way you want. Uh, Frank, we've also seen that UCAD and the British Boxing Board of Control have uh, le launched uh, a formal appeal Correct. against Conor Ben. Oh, did you expect that to happen? And yes. So? If they didn't do it, then they would not be worth having. There's been no hearing. All this nonsense about he's been exonerated. Where are the journalists? Where, what is going on in this world? Where is anybody printing the truth? There was no hearing regarding the, him testing positive. The hearing was all about jurisdictions. How does that help the sport? Finding loopholes to not have a hearing. So the Border Control and UCAD have no option than to have call for a hearing and appeal the decision. And anybody who has any concern about support, the sport will support that. And more importantly, Conor Ben, you know, if he's if he's not guilty, then have the hearing and let, with UCAD. Why wouldn't you do that and get this sorry episode out of the way? It's been dragging on what for a year or so now. You know, we keep having these things. This whole drug situation needs to be sorted out. And by the way, Matram are not the only people who test fighters. We do the same thing. We use Valda, Valda because that's what the Americans, if it's American fighters and mostly worldwide, recognise, or UK. That's who we use. And, and if they continue drugs free to not be testing for, for banned substances, substances are banned by VADA or UCAD, then it's not fit for purpose, those tests. And they should be sitting, samples, sitting on a shelf for nine days. That's bullshit. Frank, of course, Anthony Joshua has returned to the ring. Seventh round knockout of Hellenius. What was your thoughts on the performance? On what? Anthony Joshua knocking out He'd Hellenius. done what he had to do, knocking the fella out up until then. It was a ball fest. It was a snooze fest, I should say. Thank you very much. Wasn't it? Excitement was tonight. What an exciting show, eh, all these guys? Every fight was more exciting than every fight they had last week. This is exciting. These young kids are seeing stars of the future. I don't want to be I keep, we keep, and I've got to tell you, all you haters out here, I'm responding to questions you're asking. I'm not bringing it up. They're questions that you're asking me. Me, I don't even want to talk about that fight. But as you asked me, it was a snore fest. Frank, oh, oh it's all done. Go on,